Hi everyone, this is Michelle Wee West and this is Driven, a series where I get to talk to some of my favorite athletes about their journeys as investors and what they think it takes to win. Joining me today is a woman who is an absolute force. She's a five-time Olympian, three-time Olympic gold medalist, and a one-time Olympic bronze medalist. She is a female beach volleyball leader in career victories and was recently inducted into the International Volleyball Hall of Fame. Off the sand, she's a co-founder of P1440 and a proud wife and mother of three. Let's welcome Kerry Walsh Jennings. Hey. My pleasure, darling. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Yep. So let's dive right in. All right. Can you tell me a little bit about your company, P1440, what it is, where the idea came from, yeah. what P1440 stands for? Well, P1440 has become such a labor of love. You know, I've been playing professional beach volleyball for 20 years now, over 20 years. And a couple of years ago, um, I just was really dissatisfied with the direction that the pro tour was going here in America. And I kept hearing myself complain complain about it. And at some point, it's like, if you're complaining but not doing something about it, you're just enabling. And out of the woodwork, some friends of my husband's from college were like, hey, we love your sport. We think there's great opportunity here. We love you too and what you guys represent. Let's sit down and see what we can do on the pro side. And um, we just had this concept that was, you know, we want to bring more, more people to the sport. It's very niche. We mm -hmm. want to broaden it. And so we said, you know, instead of making it just beach volleyball, let's bring in the wellness. Let's bring in the lifestyle because the mm -hmm. lifestyle of a beach volleyball athlete is incredible and everyone loves it. So it was a very holistic, you know, offering. And then to get back to the name P1440, you know, we wanted it to be something bigger than just a sport. You know, we were like, so this is going to be a platform. We mm -hmm. want a platform where the athletes can launch their voices, have careers, all these things. And the 1440 came from the fact that there are only 1,440 minutes in the day. Mm -hmm. And so when we were thinking about the name for the company, we're like, time is precious, time is universal. Let's, you know, make that be the filter through which we create everything. Mm -hmm. So P1440, um, it's resonant, it's timeless, and we love it, you know? Yeah, I love that. And you said you have a... Um a digital platform on P1440. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that as well? Yeah, so we're half live events and then we have digital mm -hmm. programming as well. We have great wow. subject matter experts in nutrition and wellness and breath work. Um, you know, that's always a work in progress. And something that is really important to my husband and I is because we've learned from the best. You know, as a pro athlete, mm -hmm. you just, you source the experts, you know, and you mm -hmm. kind of follow your curi curiosities and you follow your injuries and it leads you to new experts. And so what we want in our digital platform is to have many voices. And we cover the pillars of wellness, of nutrition, of strength training, volleyball, of course, um, and basically just how to optimize your life, you know? And we're really focused on the juniors community mm -hmm. because when you start them young, you know, they carry on that way and we find that to be very purposeful. But then we get so much feedback from the parents being like, we need this too. So it feels really good. And you've been in so many high stress moments as an yeah. athlete. It, does that compare at all to the high stress of being an entrepreneur? Are they different? So different. <laughs> so different. You know, I mean, just as an athlete, like I was thinking a while ago, because it, it overwhelms me, you know, mm -hmm. running this company and we have employees and, you know, like if our programs don't do well, then people are impacted, you know? And so um, I had this thought, I'm like, it was, su it's such a luxury to be a pro athlete because you live and die by your own sword. Yeah. You know, if I'm disciplined, if I show up, if I work hard, if I stay mm -hmm. healthy, um, which a lot is in my control. I'm good, yeah. you know, and the results come. But as an entrepreneur, like, I have to wait on your timeline and your yeah. timeline. Maybe you don't like me and maybe the pitch was bad, you know. So it's just the resilience necessary is mm -hmm. huge. Um, the staying power and the grit is that's required is next level. And so it's way, I mean, it's not easy being a pro athlete, yeah. but it's my comfort zone. And mm -hmm. this has definitely brought me out of my comfort zone um, in a lot of ways. But it's making me more rangy, mm -hmm. you know, and more wily, which I yeah. really appreciate. More yeah. grace, too. <laughs> but that's what headdresses are for. Yeah. And what would you say to people? What advice would you give to people who want to start something on their own, who want to start their own P1440, Aww. but don't think they may have the resources or the knowledge to start? I'd say if something is in your heart, if you have a calling in your heart, it is your duty to follow that. Mm -hmm. And something that I've learned you know, through injury, through being, through P1440, through mm -hmm. my relationship with my husband, is that if you want something bad enough, there are all the resources you can ever need. Mm -hmm. Like truly, whether it's yeah. finances or advice, guidance, whatever mm -hmm. it is, because you don't need to have all the answers. Like it's not your job to be perfect. It's your job at the start is to have this vision. And when you have that vision, that passion, it's like a magnet, mm -hmm. you know? And then if you have the, the courage um, to follow your curiosity and just to 
to surround yourself by people who have done it and to raise your hand and say, hey, can I get some guidance? And I think that a lot of people think they need to be of a certain stature to ask for help or I'm nobody, why would they support? Mm -hmm. But people truly do love helping. And now this day and age, like there's so many communities out there to help support that. So I'd say go for it. Yeah. Go for it with all your heart. Go for it every day. You mm -hmm. know, that's what excellence requires. I love that. Yeah. And you're a mom of three. How much inspiration yes. do you grab from your kids on a daily basis for a P1440? I can't even begin to tell you. Yeah. You know, um, I, my kids are so, they're so, they shock me with their character, with their wisdom. Um, they take, like, they don't do anything they don't want to do, yeah. um, which I really respect because I'm a pleaser, <laughs> you know? And so when I think about creating stuff for 1440, like, I'm watching real time my children go through challenges, right? Mm -hmm. And fall down and get back up. And every time my children fail, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to make you so good. Yeah. So you said, um, you know, someone came with you with a great idea at the mm -hmm. perfect timing for you. Can you take us to the journey about how that little idea, that seed of an idea, became real? Man, Michelle, it became so real so fast. I'm not by nature a business person or an entrepreneur. I have so much passion and fire. And so we surrounded ourselves by really great people mm -hmm. who were able to execute the vision. Um, but it was a very meaningful launch to our company. And, you know, when you consider beach and indoor, you have 18 college scholarships. Wow. So you have 12 indoor, six on the beach. And largely in America, people don't know the opportunities that exist in beach volleyball. But mm -hmm. that's changing. And P1440 is leading the way. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. You play beach volleyball in college. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, funny. Casey made me die for a couple of balls. So I felt like <laughs> yeah. I was a beach volleyball player for a brief 30 minutes. Oh, you can. And it was glorious. For sure do it. <laughs> no, yeah. I really can't. My wow. my vertical jump is not there. It's okay. You just got to be craftier. <laughs> but you said you're not, um, you know, a, an entrepreneur. You're, you know, more yeah. of an athlete. How did you approach fundraising? Well, you know, again, I really leaned on my team and we, so we had our founders, Casey and I are founders and we had co-founders, the Mays family, and they came in and they brought the money, you know, and Casey and I, we brought the passion, the concept, the expertise and the sweat equity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we kind of grew, we brought on an investor and it blows me away and we're still with her and it blows me away her faith you know, in the company. And she sees, mm -hmm. she came to our first event in San Jose and she's like, I love this. This mm -hmm. could be big. And then, you know, we had all the learning lessons, all, you know, perceived failures, but growth. Um, but she's like, Carrie, I invested in you. And um, it like makes me want to cry because her faith in me is huge, you know? Mm -hmm. And something that I learned from our investor is that when you are investing, when you're going to create, you know, to try to create something new that doesn't exist, the people you surround yourselves by are so important, mm -hmm. you know? And that's everything, yeah. you know? Um, like money isn't the driver here. The vision is the driver. The um, pain points we want to solve mm -hmm. and the community we're serving are the drivers here. Yeah. But as far as fundraising, you know, we did all of the rounds um, to all of the brands, you know, and we had, I have never been in a bad meeting in my life. Like every meeting, I'm like, yes, like we got a great partner. And then, you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes yeah. it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So we did that journey. Um, but when our, you know, when our investor came in, that really changed the game. And she's really given us legs and the grace and the space to grow, nice. you know. So it's been, it's been very special. Yeah. And for us, kind of the early learning for me is that no matter how special you think you are and how clear your vision is to you, mm -hmm. they need to build trust in you. And so for the past couple of years, we've been in this exercise of creating great programming, building trust trust within the community and now the brands are coming and it feels really, really good. I love you know? that. Yeah. And what have you learned in the process of um, gaining an investor? Oh man, that relationships are king. Mm -hmm. You know, that sincerity is everything. And yeah. you know, every call we have with our investor, you know, all the board calls, What's so rad to me, this woman is a badass, and I'm just keeping her name private just because um, it's probably out there, but um, I respect her so much. And the first thing she does on every call is tackle the hardest thing. Mm. You know, and, and as someone who's an entrepreneur, who's running the company, like the last thing I want to talk about is money, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, the, and all of that and the budgets and all these things. But she just like goes straight for what she knows is most stressful, mm. and we talk through it, and then the rest of the meetings are cakewalk. Yeah. You know, and then we get to iterate and just kind of problem solve together. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that so much from her. And she really, she really values the relationships. And I think that's just my number one takeaway. You know, um, she cares. It's yeah. not like she just gives us this money and she doesn't care. She cares. She wants to see the growth. She wants to see the plans. And for me, it's like as an athlete, the details matter so much, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, in every arena, the details matter. Mm -hmm. And so she's just kind of reinforcing that everything it takes to be a gold medalist, to be mm -hmm. one of the best in the world, is what's yeah. required to be a successful venture capitalist, successful mm -hmm. entrepreneur. 
You know, yeah. I've learned so much being an entrepreneur. Like, it is so gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> and I have so much respect out there for all of these CEOs and managers. Mm-hmm. I and, mean, you know, every level is important. And I think that's what you learn in sports. You learn that whether you're a role player, a bench player, a mm-hmm. star, it's like, Every level is important. Every role is important. And it's your job to be a craftsman. And I feel like when you're an entrepreneur, you wear so many hats and you have to be a craftsman in so many different areas. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that, but I'm learning to be that. And again, with the grace of our investor, um, I'm just learning the value of becoming a craftsman. Like right where you're at, be where you are, do it like it matters. And it generally works out. Yeah. Yeah, and when you um, you know when you're in those really high stress environment as an entrepreneur, what do you do to calm yourself down? Do you use the techniques that you use in volleyball to help yourself as an entrepreneur? You know, usually the stress again, like I'm, I talk so fast, and I talk so much, but I'm very introverted, and um, I I'm, again, I'm a pleaser, and so it's just like when I have to have meetings with people who I perceive to be much smarter than me and who you know run billion dollar you know funds and these things, like it really stresses me out, and so I realize like as an athlete, I have a toolkit. You know, when I'm in a pickle, I go to my toolkit. What else mm-hmm. can I use? You know, and kind of crack the egg. And it's the same thing as an entrepreneur. You know, yeah. use my resources. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. If you mess up, own up to it, learn from it, mm-hmm. move on. You know, all these things. Yeah. And like sports, the highs are extremely high. Oh, my hell. In entrepreneurship. Do you have any plans in the future to invest in other sectors or to oh. start something else in a completely different area? Or you think you're just going to, you know, stay in beach volleyball? So when I think about what's next for my life, um, there are so many things I'm interested in. And all of the things that I'm like interested in investing and creating are all kind of in the wellness space. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm a mom. I'm a woman who I want to live my best life. And so everything that kind of draws my attention, it's kind of all in the wellness space. You know, whether that's experiences or supplement line, mm-hmm. you know. All of that stuff really calls to me. And last question, we've asked all the guests already this. If there's a company or opportunity you wish you could have invested in, what would it be and why? That is a good one. Well, you know what? Okay, I'm addicted to my aura ring. Oh, yeah. And I have worn all the trackers, all the bands. And this, to me, is something that I don't know if it's the application of it or just the feedback I get and the way they present it. Like, I... Love them so much. I assume they're kicking butt. I don't know their numbers. But um, this is something that fits my life. It fits my goals in life. And so I, I, like, I would just say the aura ring, for lack of a better okay. prepared answer. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I love the passion that you have for this platform. I hope nothing but the best for it. And thank you so much. It was so great seeing you You're again. rad, darling. I appreciate you. Really good job. Oh, thank you. You're, You're welcome. Yeah.